Welcome to part one of this series, trying to locate the sons of Noah and where they really went to. And the Bible tells us in uh, Genesis that Noah had three sons, um, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But these three sons were born before the flood, and then their descends, descendants were born after the flood. And we're going to look at these sons and uh, try to see where they actually went to. But in this first part of the series, we're going to be studying Shem, son of Noah, and in this video, Aram, and his son known as uh, Misa, Misa, or Massa, and here it's given as Meshach. I just want to show you in the Bible, it's given as uh, Mash, or Massa. Now the first source we're going to look at, um, look at is um, the Antiquity of the Jews by Josephus Flavius, and he was a Jewish Roman historian living in the first century AD. And now this work is very interesting because he actually gives us the sons of the descendants of Noah and what kingdoms they made or formed. So it's a very valuable resource. And he tells us here that Aram had the Aramites, which the Greeks called Syrians. So the Greeks refer to the land of Aram as Syria and the, Ar um, the Aramites as Syrians. So that's quite an important detail and we'll be looking at that later on in the series. But he goes on to say that of the four sons of Aram, Uz founded Trachonitis and Damascus, okay, it's a very famous kingdom. This country lies between Palestine and Cilicia. Ul founded Armenia and Gatso the Bactrians and Misa the Messenians. Okay, so this, this is who we're looking at, the Messenians. It is now called Karak <coughs> So this is a very important detail here that we get from Josephus that this kingdom of Mesa, the Messenians, was called Karak Spasini. Now, we're going to study this Karak Spasini uh, to see if we can find this Aramean kingdom. And the source we're going to be using is Pliny the Elder. And he was a Roman author, a naturalist, a natural philosopher, and a naval and an army commander. So he did many things. And he lived in the first century AD as well. But what he does is he gives us actually a description of where this kingdom was located. So that way we can try to see if we can find it, where it really was. And um, some important things here, it was also known as Alexandria, and also known as Antiochia Insusiana. We're going to come back to that. But this was, this was actually the capital of a kingdom known as um, Karakani. So before we look at this description of Pliny the Elder, let's look at this kingdom Karakani. Okay, so there we can see the connection to um, Messin or Mesha, the son of Aram, Mesa. Okay, so that's the connection that it was known as uh, Mesha, but then it became known as um, Kar Karakani. So some, some important things here is that it was an important trade route for between Mesopotamia and India. Okay, so that's interesting. And this is also important that it was a port city for Susa. Okay, because remember we spoke about that uh, it was known as Antiochia and Susiana. Okay, the Susiana comes from this word Susa. That's where that comes from. So what we'll do is, let's start the description and uh, we'll see where Pliny the Elder's description takes us. So it starts by saying that the town of Carax, okay, so this is the Aramean kingdom, um, Carax Pacini, is situated in the innermost recess of the Persian Gulf from which projects the country called Arabia Felix. So we need to know where Arabia Felix is. So let me show you a map for this. Okay, so here it is. Yeah, it's a bit small, but you can see there, look, Arabia Felix. It's also known as Happy Arabia. So it's southern Arabia, and it's located in what we call uh, modern, uh, modern day Yemen. So this is Happy, Happy Arabia, or Arabia Felix. So let's look at that again. So it's saying that this kingdom is situated in the innermost recess of the Persian Gulf from which c projects the country called Arabia Felix. So we can see that this is going to be an important detail. That this country, sorry, this kingdom um, projects from this Ar Arabia Felix. Now I want to show you another important thing that was, um, this part's really crucial. And um, it says here that this region that we're speaking of, this kingdom of Karakeni, it became the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea. Okay, this is crucial. Now, satrapy that means um, basically like a region. So the Persian Empire was so vast, 
they had these different regions and they called those regions satraps and they were put an official in charge of that satrap to make it easier to govern the empire but it's saying that this kingdom was actually called the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea so now we've got another detail to try help us find it so let me, sh let me show you where this Erythraean Sea is because this is very very important see how it's here by the Horn of Africa so here's the Erythraean Sea um, to the south of modern day Yemen and this Erythraean Sea is the ancient name for the Red Sea okay, known as the Red Sea and there's some very important details in here that we're going to look at um, just a few well, I don't want to get dis uh, distracted but there's an interesting part here where it says according to Herodotus the Phoenicians may have originally come from the Erythraean Sea and we're going to speak about that later on in the series but down here it says the modern country of Eritrea was named after this ancient Greek name okay so this Eritrea comes from the word Erythraean or Erythrea or Erythraean Sea let me show you that okay so this is northern Ethiopia region we've got this um, sorry it's not this picture it's uh, it's this one or the wrong one this is the Eri this is Eritrea so you can see here that we've got the Erythraean Sea and now we've got this region called Eritrea and this kingdom that we're looking for is known as the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea so I think now it's time to do a bit of a recap and think about some of the details that we need that we've covered so far we've got Arabia Felix but we've also got the um, Erythraean Sea and I think this is a good timing to look to see where they actually locate this kingdom okay here we've got um, Karakini and then we've got um, Karak Spasinu. So this is the capital of this kingdom. So they loc they located here. And let me show you maybe a different picture so you know what we're talking. In the region of modern day Iraq, this area known as the Fertile Crescent, this is where, this is where they loc locate that kingdom. But now we've got to think about some of those details that we've already mentioned. Okay, Remember I, we've already seen that um, this uh, region known as Arabia Felix projects from this kingdom. Okay, let me just show you that again so we can start really focusing in now on these details. Um, where's my map? It's this one. Now, if you think about that description that Happy Arabia or Arabia Felix projects from this kingdom, would you say that fits for this location here? Would you say that Happy Arabia projects from this kingdom? To me, that doesn't seem to fit. But if we start looking in this region here, because remember we've also got the Erythraean Sea to think about. This was a very, very crucial detail that this region or this kingdom was known as the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea. You can see how that's making us look here in this region. And then if we think about if we think about Arabia Felix, could we not say that this looks more makes more sense that we could say that, that Arabia Felix projects from this region? Can you see how this country or this region projects from here and how we've got this region called Eritrea we've got this region here known as the Erythraean Sea so would it not make more sense that this kingdom was in this region and then this was known as the region of the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea so very fascinating and um, I think we can see that there are a few discrepancies already with this location by the modern day Iraq because Pliny the Elder is saying that um, Arabia Felix projects from this region and we also learned that it's uh, from this detail here that it became a satrapy for the Erythraean Sea and you can see here that this you know this is not by the Erythraean Sea this is by what they say the Persian Gulf is so you can see the discrepancies already Now the other thing that's obviously going to be a bit controversial if we go back to Pliny the Elder's description is that we need to find the Tigris because this kingdom is located near the Tigris and if we look um, we're told that the Tigris is running down in this region here so this is going to be a bit controversial but I want to show you on this map that I saw this um, right here look it says T-I-G-R Tigra 
So I thought, could that be connected to the Tigris? And this region is still known today as Tigray. It's the Tigray region in northern Ethiopia. So that could maybe explain this final, more of the final details that we need, obviously a crucial detail, but then it's obviously very controversial because then if we're saying this is the Tigris, then the picture starts to change completely. And um, let me just show you the Old Persian. Okay, that the Tigris was known in Old Persian as Tigra. See that? And if we look at this um, T I G R, when you pronounce that, you kind of get the A anyway when you pronounce this R, Tigra. So it seems very close to me, and this could be fascinating that, um, that this region may have actually been the Tigris. Can you see how uh, important this could be? That by looking for this Aramean kingdom and by following these description of Pliny the Elder, it's all leading us to look in this region. So just for um, a final recap on some of these things that we've spoken about, we've got the Erythraean Sea here, and we've got this region known as Eritrea. And this kingdom that we're looking for became known as the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea. Okay. Can you see how that all seems to fit in this location with Eritrea and the Erythraean Sea? But then it also says, Pine of the Elder, there's a very important kind of description which says, Happy Arabia projects from this kingdom. And then we said, you know, you have to, each person has to decide for themselves what they think is true and uh, what rings true. Does that fit for this location here? You know, any of these things that we've been speaking about? But there is one more thing that we haven't spoken about, is this Persian Gulf. Because it says this town of Karak is situated in the innermost recess of the Persian Gulf. Now this is something that we're going to speak about um, as we go forward in the series, but I just want to show you that we do have um, a possibility and an avenue to research this, because if we go to Josephus, he tells us something interesting about Elam. He says, for Elam left behind him the Elamites, the ancestors of the Persians. So the Persians come out of Elam, and I was saying to you that this is a very important detail that I'm going to come back to is that this, this this kingdom was also known as Antiochia in Susiana okay and the Susiana that comes from the ancient capital of Elam which is known as Susa okay so this is near the region of Susa so this kingdom provided like a port city for Susa I want to show you what I saw as well this really gets fascinating because right here, look, we've got Senard or Susa. So the capital of Elam was Susa. And we need to find Susa to locate this Aramean kingdom in this region. And here we have Susa. So this is going to be fascinating. This is going to lead on to part two. Because in part two, we're going to try to locate um, Elam. And where did um, Elam go to? And you can see now we're looking in this region in Ethiopia. So that's what we're going to do in part two. And then as we go further, we're going to try to investigate this connection with the Persians and the Persian Gulf, because maybe this this Gulf here, which is, known as, which is known as the Gulf of Aden, I think they mentioned it in here. Let me see. It might have been in this one. Yeah, the Gulf of Aden, or the Gulf of Oman which is near the Eritrean Sea. I wonder if this gulf may have actually been known as the Persian Gulf. Because if we're going to start looking for Elam in this region, and then the Persians come out of Elam, maybe this was actually the home for the Persians. So maybe this gulf was known as the Persian Gulf. And then everything would fit from Pliny the Old Description, that this kingdom of Karax, in the innermost recess of the Persian Gulf, that this, ha this country um, Arabia Felix projects from this kingdom and it became a satrapy of the Erythraean Sea and then we also know that it's located near the Tigris and we have this Tigra and this region known as Tigray. So very fascinating. I hope you enjoyed this first video on trying to locate this first son of um, a ram that we've looked at, um, Misha. And we're still going to go through these sons and these descendants but um, in part two, we're going to look at Elam. And I just want to say before we finish that 
We're also going to be using the source known as the Book of Jubilees. And it's not in the Bible, it's in the it's in the Apocrypha. So some people say that this book is, you know, not you can't consider it scripture or divinely inspired. But we're going to use this book of Jubilees because it actually gives us a description of how the three sons divided the land amongst them, their descendants. So that could be vital for the study of trying to find out where did the sons go. So we're going to study this book and see how it holds up. I found it to be a very useful, reliable source so far. So that's the main sources we're going to be looking at, is the Book of Jubilees and the Book of Josephus and the Bible, but other sources as well. And just to, for, just to finish before we um, wrap up this video, just to give you a bit of an idea of uh, the history for Aram, because I just wanted to read this little part to you, that it says here, the area of Aram did not develop into a bigger empire. It consisted of a number of small states in present-day Syria and northern Palestine. Just a little bit of interesting detail that this kingdom of Aram it never actually became into a big empire, like some of the famous empires, like the Assyrian Empire, the Persian Empire, the Hittite Empire. And um, it was more these city-states, like we spoke about that famous uh, Damascus, Aram Damascus, and another famous one was um, Aram Zoba. And it says here that it was only about, um, let me go to that, to finish with this. It was only about the 12th century BCE that there was actually like an Aramean polity around Damascus. So it was kind of like a very important ancient region and there were lots of kingdoms vying for control of this so that Aram was kind of always um, being um, ruled over by other kingdoms. But it, in this period they may have actually had their own dynasty and ruled over their territory. But we'll try and learn as we go some of this history. So don't worry if you don't know all these kingdoms or these empires yet. We'll slowly go through it. So until the next video, where we're going to look at Elam, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.